In considering Titus and, it, and its savagery, you might also know that the most popular play of Shakespeare's lifetime, by far, it was Thomas Kidd's, K-I-Y-D, The Spanish Tragedy. It was produced more frequently, read more frequently, acted in more frequently than almost any other play of his time period. It's also an early 1590s piece, and it was, and it was, it was um, somehow captivated the early modern imagination. And it is a story of a, of a revenge, not unlike Titus. And it's a story of a father like Titus, and his name is Hieronimo, who pretends or feigns madness in order to enact revenge for the death of his son. Now, Shakespeare's going to flip that revenge tragedy around when we get to Hamlet, when, of course, it's a son revenging a father. But in looking at Titus and, and, and uh, the title character's desire to revenge his family, uh, you, you've got to keep in mind that Shakespeare's audience was, was dazzled by the Spanish tragedy, uh, fascinated by it. So that, that, in part, too, explains some of the generic wildness. Another piece of historical information to consider as you get started with the play is early modern culture was fascinated and horrified by the Ottoman Islamic Empire to its south. In terms of international geopolitics, England at the time in Shakespeare's lifetime was not the great England of the 19th century, the colonial power. It was a bit of a backwater. The two great superpowers of the world were Catholic uh, Spain, which had an enormous European empire and influence, and the Ottoman uh, Islamic Turks, who uh, controlled or occupied most of the Mediterranean and as far east into Persia or Iran, uh, and even even into bits of India, and was encroaching into Western Europe. And, th and this was a great threat to the early imagination, not just politically, but religiously. Uh, you have another Abrahamic faith um, there was a, um, that was threatening Western Christendom, and it was a thriving, successful culture uh, that loomed large in the imagination. So when you see a character like Titus, you can think of the Roman Empire and issues with Catholicism, but when you th see his main opponent in this play, Aaron the Moor, and Moor is uh, a slang term for uh, Muslim, North African Muslim, dark-skinned, black, uh, North African Muslim. Uh, you're seeing Shakespeare pit two worlds uh, against one another, Catholic Christendom in some way, and the Ottoman Islamic Turks, at least as it um existed in the in the uh, Shakespearean imagination. Of course, Aaron is a is a strange <laughs> conflation. You've got Aaron, a very Jewish name, uh, Aaron the Moor. Um, in, in Shakespeare's imagination, the, the Jew and the Muslim were conflated together. They weren't divided as they are in our 20th and 21st century imagination. They were conflated as circumcised others, that is, uh, children of Abraham who had not yet um, accepted uh, Christ. Uh, the Jews, of course, were problematic in the Shakespearean imagination uh, because they, they were around at the birth of Christianity, but they, they hung in there without accepting Christ. Um, the Ottoman uh, Islamic Turks were even more problematic for two reasons. One, uh, they, they were an Abrahamic faith that got started 600 or so years after Christianity, which is, you know, they had the message, but weren't interested and, in fact, wanted to create another universal religion. That's one reason. And they were phenomenally successful at it. Uh, living in the Ottoman Islamic world for, for, for lots of people was incredibly, uh, incredibly attractive. So when we look at Aaron the Moor on the one hand, uh, one of Shakespeare's most dynamic, intelligent, uh, engaging characters. He's, he's in the tradition of Iago and Othello later on, one of these perfectly sort of evil characters that we, 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 we just want to watch. We can't get enough of them. Uh, you have to imagine him as a figure for that Western European fear or anxiety of the time. 